inshallah from them to send us something to say uh, what is necessary not necessary we sit we listen because it is the job of a believer to listen it is the job of the awliya and the anbiya to speak to recite to the ikra it is for us to listen not our work to say ikra it is our work is to listen asking inshallah that they send something we listen to them what is necessary for us the knowledge that cannot benefit us it is knowledge but it cannot benefit us it becomes a curse to us it becomes a heaviness to us we are talking about the confusion of the ahir zaman black is white and white is black men become woman woman become man Huck looks like bottle, bottle looks like huck. The wolves, they are in sheep's clothing. The sheep, they are in wolves' clothing. But the punishment is going to come. And it's going to come and it's going to happen in this darkness too. Because we are very weak. The time is going to come that because of our weakness we say we don't want this to happen this one is our father this one is our mother this one is our brother this one is our sister no before your relationship to each other is relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no family in pre-eternity there is no family post-eternity only family is believers only the believers, they are brothers. Because a family that is judged by blood, it is the lowest level. Lowest. It is not for nothing. The blood is what? Najis. The blood, it is Najis. Holy ones, their Najasat, it is uh, purity. But the time is going to come because we are in such a low level confusion time that we're going to say, our heart, Ya Rabbi, don't punish this one because we know this one. We are brothers, we are sisters, we are father, mother to this one. But no, when it is going to come that time, it is going to come the punishment just like the Bani Israel. The Bani Israel, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing in the Quran al-Karim, how they are eating, not karamat, mujizat, not karamat. They are eating the mujizat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending the miracle of the uh, quail and the mana wa salwa. Salwa? Yeah from paradise but because their hearts are so dirty with the dunya dirty with jealousy they're looking at that they're not understanding it is a food from paradise what they're asking for fruit food from the asfalasafilin from the ground from the dirt where is the onion where is the lentil where is all this food that was given to us when we were what slaves we don't want food when we are masters of the paradise. We want food that we are slaves to the who? To Allah? No, to the unbelievers, to the mushriks. Slaves, we want that kind of food. Because their heart was not clean. Their heart is still for this dunya. They want the kind of food that in the sharia to Muhammad, والسلام, it is makruh to eat before you pray, to eat the onions, your mouth to be stinky, smelly like that, and to pray. They're looking to that, and they say that is better than the food from the paradise. Well, because their hearts become so uh, confused, so much in this confusion, so much in this darkness,
they start worshipping to their desire. What is it that they desire? Gold. So when Musa is showing the power of Allah, splitting the sea, showing the power of Allah, mujizat, miracle after miracle, showing. And when Musa is saying, I'm going up to the mountain of Tur to speak to your Lord, they're saying, why we don't see our Lord? We want to see our Lord. Because we're still in that slave mentality. We like the unbelievers. They see their Lord. They make their Lord. They worship to their Lord. Their Lord gives them something back. What is that? Their desires. What is that? Their ego. What is that? Shaitan and this dunya that they are worshipping and is giving something back to them. They say, we want that. We don't want this Lord that's only seeing you. We want equal for everyone. Equal for everyone. That is why they believe that when the Tawrat al-Sharif was sent, it was not only sent to Musa salam. they said it was sent to everyone that was there. <laughs> you know that? They did not believe it was just sent to Musa salam. They said it was sent to everyone that was there. Oh, because of this jealousy inheriting from shaitan that is saying, what? I have to bow down in front of this one. He has to bow down in front of me. We are equal. I bow down in front of you, but in reality, my makam is so much higher because I'm made from the fire. Those ones who are jealous, you feel the fire of jealousy burning completely different from other kinds of fires. So they gather everything that their heart desires. What is that? Gold. They gather everything, then they start making it into the shape. Into what shape? Into that shape that they see too. The shape that they see, those ones who are worshipping, it gives them so much power. What is that? The cow. The heaven is a cow. The bull. But up till today, they're saying this is the Lord. They start making it, and it was the nephew of Musa, salam, that when he was hiding and seeing Jibrail, alayhi salam, coming down in that heavenly burak, different from that other burak, heavenly horse coming, Jibrail salam coming from the paradises, touching from the earth, going, he was hiding, he was seeing, he was running, he was taking that earth, the sand, and he's saying this is very powerful. He take that and he put it into the gold, and the gold in the shape of that bull, that cow, became a lion started moving around, started playing, and everyone starts to get so much more attracted to it. And what do they do? If you say, they say that they want to worship, what do they do? They worship? They worship their ego. Which is what? They start drinking. They start getting drunk. They start singing. They start partying. They start doing everything. And mashallah, that the Ummah today, they're doing every night. During every night, the way that they are partying and enjoying letting their nafs to be completely wild. Then Israel did that one time. We are doing that every night. They learn from the unbelievers. They say, this is how we worship. Doing every kind of dirtiness to pull every kind of dirty, shaitanic energy to come down. Because this is what the ego is pulling. The ego is never pulling Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never pulling Rahman. It's only pulling shaitan. And when Musa salam saw what his nation was doing and he was holding the shariat and he was holding the tariqat and he's saying, Ya Rabbi, my nation, they are not ready for tasawuf, for tariqat. They are still ego in the lowest level. This tariqat, Ya Rabbi, breaking it and saying, my descendant is going to come. Who? Isa salam. Going to come to give awam. 
privately, it's something else. He's saying they cannot take because their level, it is still low. They're still worshipping to their ego now. So we cannot give now tasawuf. We cannot give tariqat. We cannot give spirituality. So the harshest, the most hard shariat given to them to keep their ego in check. Then what happened? This is the point I'm coming to. What happened? Punishment coming to them. There are a few. They pulled themselves back. They said this is wrong. Harun, alayhi salam, with those ones who are following him, they said this is wrong what you are doing. We have to wait for our prophet to come back. They said what coming back? We don't even believe. This we can believe. We can touch, we can feel, we can see. According to your five senses, but you are senseless according to your millions of other senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, to your spirit. Because you only want to satisfy these five senses. But there are millions of other senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to our spirit. You cannot count how many senses there are. You don't want to satisfy that. Punishment coming to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending the dukhan, the smoke, the darkness to cover everything. Saying to Harun alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam coming back, punishment for them to take out the sword and to finish them. But there has to be complete darkness. The believers, if they were to see who it is in front of them, their hearts going to get soft and weakness, not carrying out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending them that time darkness. If they don't see who it is, their job is to finish. Finishing it. The Allah saying, three days and three nights, they were cutting down. Cutting down, cutting down, until then, the darkness lifted away, they see. This is our family. This is our tribe. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above everything. That kind of punishment coming to this nation, 1,000 times more. Like I said, they did that kind of wrongness one time. But this nation in the Ahir Zaman doing it every night. That if it is not because of Rahmatul Alameen, not because of the dua and his intercession and his shafat and the shafat of the Awliya Allah, Azab would have fallen and fallen to finish this whole world 100 times at least. Finish. We are pulling ourselves away from these areas of darkness to be the people who are taking the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting it into our hearts to see. We want our Lord to be pleased with us and we want haq to be in our hearts and haq to be in our eyes, haq to be on our tongue, in our hands, in our feet, for us to be Hakanis, for us to live and to die for the truth. May Allah accept our humble dua for the sake of the Holy Prophet, Sultanul Awliya and Sahib al Sayyid, inshallah, for us to become strong, strong believers, for all Nazar to be lifted away from us, for all Shaitaniyat to be away from us, for all hypocrisy to be away from us. For all of those ones who are against Allah and His Prophet to come down. Amen. And for us, inshallah, Rahman, to be strong and to hold on to our Shaykh. Awaiting Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam to be those ones who are pleased with their Lord and their Lord is pleased with us. Amen. May Allah forgive me and bless you, Al Fatiha. Amen. Inshallah, Rahman.